Hi everyone. So today I'm back uh, talking about uh, ancient Chinese history, and uh, so today I'm going to talk about this man here. This is uh, Sima Qian. He's uh, known as uh, one of China's earliest uh, eunuchs. His story is uh, very tragic because uh, he was uh, once in a generation talent, one of the most brilliant minds uh, throughout uh, China's 5,000 year history. And I'm going to cover his story briefly in uh, today's video. So let's get started. Sima Qian, he's one of uh, China's uh, greatest uh, historians, and uh, he was castrated for a crime that he never ever committed, all because of uh, the emperor's uh, ego. So his birthday has been uh, widely disputed. He was either born on uh, 145 uh, BCE or uh, the year of uh, 135. So there's some discrepancies here, but the general idea is that uh, this happened uh, well over 2,000 years ago in uh, ancient China. And he married at a very young age. He had uh, one elder daughter. He also would uh, go on to have two more sons before his castration. So he spent his early years uh, traveling through uh, to the countryside. He was uh, lucky enough to visit uh, almost uh, every corner of China, studying Chinese literature, Chinese cultures, and traditions. And the, in the year of uh, 110 BC, so the, this was uh, at the age of uh, around 35, if we go by the birth date of uh, 145 BC, his father felt extremely ill, and uh, his father suspected that uh, his time was running out, and his father was you know, a high up government official, he was in charge of uh, literacy history, and so his father figured uh, perhaps his time was done, so he summoned his son back to the capital to take over his work and continue to build his uh, family legacy. So Sima Qian, he was absolutely brilliant. So he, he was able to finish his father's work, uh, which his father started. He wrote the uh, Grand Historian, or uh, in Chinese is known as the Shi Ji, which compromises of over 130 chapters and half a million Chinese characters. This thing is absolutely unbelievable. And uh, one of the great uh, men that had a great influence on his work was uh, Confucius and uh, his work on uh, the Spring and Autumn Annals, which had a great influence on uh, Sima Qian's work. Uh, this book, The Grand Historian, would become one of the most important pieces of literature in uh, Chinese history. It is still widely studied to this day. And uh, the characters you see here on the left, he wrote everything by hand. It is incredible. 500,000 Chinese characters, all written by hand. I need to fast forward to uh, 99 BC, so now we're looking at 2100 years ago. So there's two generals, uh, Li Ling and Li Guangli. Very important to mention, Li Ling, he is the brother-in-law of the emperor. So this point is very important. So these two generals, they led a campaign against the Xiongnu. It's modern day uh, Mongolia. So they marched the uh, army into battle with uh, these uh, Mongolians over 2000 years ago in 99 BC. But uh, they were defeated. And uh, so Emperor Wu at the time, he was super pissed. But see, he couldn't blame uh, Li Guangli because uh, obviously that's his brother-in-law. So he blamed everything on uh, General Li Ling. And uh, Xima Qian, he wasn't too pleased with this. So everybody, obviously, and this is the Emperor, so everybody uh, in the government agreed with the Emperor that uh, Li Ling should take all the blame. But Xima Qian was the only one to defend uh, General Li Ling. And the thing is, they barely knew each other. He, uh, Sima Qian only did this out of respect. Yes, purely out of respect. That's how great this man was. Or maybe it was a dumb decision. So uh, the Emperor Wu, he was obviously pissed at this. The fact that he disagreed with his decision. And he viewed this action as rebellion against the Emperor. And uh, this is attacked on his brother-in-law. So because of this, uh, Sima Qian, he was sentenced to death. But because uh, given the work he's done and uh, his high up uh, government position, so uh, the umpire made an exception for his sentence. His sentence could be commuted by paying an extraordinary amount of cash, which nobody could ever afford. That amount of cash was impossible for him, or the other option was to be castrated and live the rest of his life as a eunuch, while also serving a short prison sentence. And uh, Sima Qian would go on to choose the latter, to be uh, castrated and live as a eunuch because he wanted to, to complete his family's legacy. He wanted to complete uh, all the literature work that he's been working on. So as a result of this, in the year of uh, 99 BC, he was uh, castrated for a crime that he never committed, all because of uh, the emperor's ego. So, and he became one of the earliest known eunuchs in Chinese history. I'm sure there was a few before him, but uh, he was the, one of the earliest known documented cases. So we're going back uh, over 2100 years. 
And after his castration, he still had to serve uh, between two to three years in the uh, Chinese prison. After he was let out, he was given the high position of uh, Zhong Shu Ling. This is a government position that's only offered to eunuchs. You see, uh, it's because uh, these eunuchs, they're not able to reproduce. They could hold very high up government positions because the fact that they were castrated and their bloodline ends with their castration. And uh, Sima Qian, he was really once a generation genius on top of uh, his literacy work. He was also one of the earliest known astronomers. Not just in Chinese history, in world history. We're talking, you know, over 2000 years ago. He had great roles in predicting patterns in the sun and the stars, predicting solar eclipse, earthquakes. He also revised the ancient Chinese calendar. So the ancient Chinese calendar will become known as the, the Tai Chu calendar. It was the first Chinese calendar created using precise mathematical calculation. This guy was a true genius. His legacy will live on to this day. Like I said, uh, his case was quite unique because uh, throughout Chinese history, most eunuchs they were castrated at a very very young age. So their bloodline would also die with their castration. But uh, he was castrated at a much later age. So by the time of his castration, he already had a daughter and two sons. So his sons uh, Xi Ma Guan and Xi Ma Lin, they feared uh, family extermination following you know, his uh, castration and his uh, sentence to prison. So uh, they fled the capital and uh, to the Shanxi province and uh, they will go on to change their last names. One of them changed their last name to Tong, the other changed their last name to Feng and they will actually go on to marry and have a family and live on a normal life. It is widely believed that uh, his bloodline lives on over 2000 years later in uh, modern day China. There's also a planet that's named after him that's named uh, 12620 to honor his life's work as an astronomer. So uh, there we have it, one of the earliest known Chinese eunuchs castrated in 99 BC to uh, Sun Yaoting. And I covered his story in a previous short video. He's China's final eunuch. He was castrated back in 1910 by his father. And uh, he passed away in the year of 1996. So there we have it, 2095 years of a very dark chapter in Chinese history. Tens of millions of men were forcefully castrated. So now I have a question. So do feminists uh, still think that uh, women have been oppressed more than men throughout history? Or, or maybe men and women were both oppressed? And uh, modern feminists, they only want to focus on one side of the story. The side of the story that only benefits women. There's something to think about. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.